Hello everybody, it's Will here from Flow Mountain Bike and this next to me here is a brand new e-mountain bike. This is the 2020 Specialized Levo SL. Now with a brand new frame, a new motor and battery system, there is a lot to go through on this bike. If you want further details about the new Levo SL, scroll down to the video description below and you'll see a link that will take you to our first ride review of this new e-mountain bike. While you're down there, if you haven't already, consider subscribing to our YouTube channel for plenty more video reviews just like this one coming your way in the near future. Upon first glance, the Levo SL looks almost identical to the current Levo. Indeed, both bikes feature the distinctive sidearm silhouette and are built around 29 inch wheels with 150 millimeters of travel front and rear. With the exception of the chainstay length, even the geometry is the same between the two bikes. Where the two bikes differ significantly though is in the chassis and in the power plant. The key story with the Levo SL is that it's built around a unique motor and battery system which sees complete bikes coming in four whole kilograms lighter than the Levo. That's a big deal in the e-mountain bike world and Specialized knows it. In typically humble fashion for the Californian brand, it isn't calling the Levo SL the lightest bike in its class, but rather a bike that's in a class of its own. The original idea for the Levo SL was born out of a curiosity to see just how light you could build an e-mountain bike if you got rid of the high-powered turbo mode. According to data that specializes access through its Mission Control app, which is approaching 100,000 active users, the engineers discovered that most riders weren't using the full power modes and were finishing their rides with plenty of battery life left. That raised the question, why carry around an overpowered motor and a heavier battery if riders weren't using it? The result is the SL 1.1 motor. This is a unique mid-drive motor that Specialized has designed and engineered for its own bikes. We first saw the SL 1.1 motor in the Creo e-road bike last year, and really it was only a matter of time before Specialized brought its new motor to the dirt. The Levo SL is the first e-mountain bike to feature the SL 1.1 motor. It's significantly more compact than the Broza manufactured motor found in the regular Levo. It's also a lot less powerful with only 240 watts of peak power output compared to 565 watts in the Levo. The 320 watt hour battery, which sits inside the down tube, is also less than half the size of that found in the top end Levo models. However, the SL 1.1 motor and battery are significantly lighter. Together, they actually weigh less than the Levo's motor on its own. According to Specialized, the SL 1.1 motor is also significantly more efficient, so it consumes less watts per hour in the first place, reducing the need for a big battery pack. In terms of range, you're looking at around one hour of ride time in full-blown turbo mode and up to three hours in eco mode. If you need more than that, it's possible to add on a separate range extender battery pack. This 160 watt hour battery can be purchased separately for 600 bucks, though Specialized does include one with the S-Works model and two range extenders with the Founders Edition model. One thing to note on the range extender, it is possible to run the motor on the range extender alone. For those who want to fly with their bike, you could remove the internal battery completely and take a range extender battery with you in your carry-on luggage, as some airlines will allow you to bring up to a 160 watt hour battery on the plane. We've got a bit more info about that in our launch story online, so make sure you check out the link in the video description below. There are five models in the 2020 Specialized Levo SL lineup, with prices ranging from $9,800 to $26,500. No, that last number is not a mistake. That's the actual price of the extremely limited Founders Edition model, which comes with a creme de la creme spec and a bonkers paint job, which includes gold leaf graphics. Seriously. <laughs> I've been testing a much more reasonable mid-spec model of the range, the Levo SL Expert Carbon. This model sells for $13,200 and is built around the same FACT 11M carbon fibre frame as the top-end models. 
It's worth noting that regardless of which Levo SL model you're looking at, each one comes with the same SL 1.1 motor and 320 watt hour battery pack. The Levo SL Expert Carbon comes decked out with a Fox suspension package with a 150 millimeter travel Fox 34 fork on the front and a float DPS shock on the back. There's a SRAM GX Eagle 1x12 drivetrain along with alloy Praxis cranks and a tiny upper chain guide. The G2 RSC brakes are smooth and provide excellent modulation and power is boosted with a 180mm rear rotor and a big 200mm rotor on the front. You also get carbon Roval wheels which are wrapped with 2.3 inch specialised tyres. There's a butcher up front and an eliminator out back. These feature the new grid trail casing which is a substantial improvement in terms of stability over the previous grid casing. It's also nice to see specialized new tires actually measuring up at the claimed width. All up, our medium test bike weighs in at 17.6 kilograms without pedals and with the tires set up tubeless. I did have the chance to weigh the same size bike in the pricier S-Works model and that weight drops down to 16.95 kilograms, but it does add nearly $6,000 to the price tag. As for how this bike rides on the trail, my immediate reaction from riding the Levo SL is just how similar it feels to its naturally aspirated counterpart, the Stump Jumper. The 437mm chainstay length is much shorter than the 455mm chainstays on the regular Levo, and shorter than most of the competition by 10 to 30 millimeters. It's actually the same chainstay length as what you'll find on the Stump Jumper, and it's a big reason why the Levo SL is so lively on the trail. The light front end helps too with an intuitive steering feel provided by a standard 51mm fork offset and a not super slack 66 degree head angle. Without a tandem wheelbase, the Levo SL doesn't ask you to ride it in a really exaggerated manner. It's an easy handling bike with spot on weight distribution and oodles of natural agility. And here's the thing, I think it actually handles better than the regular stump jumper. The reason for that? It's heavier. With a motor and battery on board, there's a few more kilos in the Levo SL chassis, and that makes it a more planted bike out on the trail with great momentum carry on rolling descents. There's just enough weight to noticeably improve stability, but not so much to stifle the handling. It's a bit like riding a really burly enduro bike, except this one is a lot easier to pedal up the hills. Up front, the Fox 34 is a quality trail fork. However, it does feel quite stretched out in this 150mm travel 29er size. There's only so much those 34mm stanchions can do when they're repeatedly smacked into large rocks at speed. In these moments where I was possibly pushing the Levo SL beyond its intended limit, there was enough binding in the chassis that I was wishing for the burlier Fox 36 on more than a few occasions. I can appreciate the reasons why Specialized chose the lighter 34 for the Levo SL, but I can't help but wonder how it would ride with the 36 up front. The SL1 motor itself is exceptionally smooth. Because the motor disengages completely after you've gone beyond the speed limiter, there is also very little drag through the pedals, something that's easy to see when you remove the chain and spin the cranks forward. According to the engineers, there's around 2.5 watts of drag through the bottom bracket. A Shimano Durace crank set in BB has around 1.9 watts of drag. Unlike other EMTBs on the market that feel like you're pedaling through sticky treacle after you hit that speed limit, it's actually quite hard to detect that point on the Levo SL. The gearbox mechanism spins nearly twice as fast as the belt drive system found on the Broza Mag S motor. On the trail, that translates to a higher pitch whine. I'm told that the decibel level is actually the same between the two motors, but I definitely notice more noise on the Levo SL. It is quieter than a Shimano Steps E8000 motor though. While the power delivery is smooth and seamless, I still found turbo to be a little too much, especially on anything technical. As such, I spent most of my time riding in the trail in eco modes where the assistance felt more natural. In eco, you'll actually work pretty hard to ride at a reasonable pace. Now, it is also possible to alter the power delivery of all three power modes via the Mission Control app. So for those who want to put in maximum effort to get maximum range out of the battery, you can tune both the support level and the peak power output independently. Otherwise, it didn't have too many issues with the Levo SL. I did experience some annoying rattle coming from the internal cabling, which I noticed more so because the rest of the bike is so quiet. The X-Fusion dropper post is slick and fast, and the SRL lever is absolutely superb. Likewise, Specialized has the rest of the contact points absolutely dialed, with nice tacky grips, a comfortable saddle, and a well-shaped riser bar. 
The G2 brakes were fine and did everything I asked of them, though if I'm being picky, I still prefer the more solid lever feel and the brute power of SRAM's code brakes. Overall, this new e-mountain bike is a thoroughly impressive machine. With the Levo SL, Specialized has ushered in a new genre of lightweight, low-power EMTBs. While it wasn't the first brand to do so, it has shown the biggest commitment to the concept so far. The new motor offers seamless performance and its compact size delivers a significant packaging advantage for keeping the geometry nice and tight. As a result of the low complete bike weight and the short back end, the handling on this bike is superb. It's nimble and easy to ride, but it offers the stability of a bigger enduro bike thanks to the added mass from the motor and the battery. From this perspective, Specialized isn't so worried about the Levo SL eating into Levo sales, since EMTB riders who want maximum power and range for shuttling bigger and steeper descents will still opt for the Levo. Instead, it's more concerned about what the Levo SL means for the stump jumper. Regardless, the Levo SL presents itself as a compelling option for those who don't need to ride around in turbo mode all day long, and its low weight and sleek design may be enough to lure in trail riders who haven't been tempted by existing e-mountain bikes on the market. Personally, we're looking forward to seeing how other brands respond to this bike, since the Levo SL establishes something of a fork in the road for EMTB development. Moving forward, will we see other brands seek to split their range between high-powered, big battery EMTBs and lightweight, low-powered EMTBs? Only time will tell, but one thing is guaranteed. If this Levo SL is anything to go by, Specialized is not slowing down whatsoever. Now, if you'd like to read the full review of the 2020 Specialized Levo SL, make sure you click that link in the video description, which will take you to flowmountainbike.com to read the full review. If you've got any questions for me about the Levo SL, make sure you drop them into the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them for you. Otherwise, if you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel for plenty more video reviews, just like this one, coming your way in the near future. Otherwise, that's it from me, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time. Toorou!